Welcome back to part two of part two of 20A. So today we're looking at applications of vectors in terms of geometry in both three dimensions and two dimensions. So vectors can be used to help us solve problems and prove properties of geometrical shapes. Okay, and we can often form these shapes using vectors and we can do so without our x, y plane. So that means you can just sketch the vectors in space um, as a rough sketch without necessarily having to plot the points specifically on your plane. And you should still be able to manipulate the vectors um, to answer all the questions, which is quite nice. So let's start with our examples. The first question, points A, B, C and D are the vertices of a parallelogram. Now we know that M and N are the midpoints of AB and DC respectively. So M cuts AB in half, so AM and MB will be the same length, and then N cuts CD in half, so CN and ND will be the same length. It says let A be the vector from A to B. So just make sure you have your arrow indicated by the direction and be careful not to mix these up with your, your parallel line indications. So we have A from A to B and B from A to D. Okay, beautiful. Now what's next? So before we start this question, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label in some vectors. Notice that AD is in the same direction and because this is the parallelogram, it's also going to be the same length of BC. So BC and AD in that same direction are actually the same vectors. They're going to be vector B. The same with AB, that is in the same direction and the same length as D to C. So I could say that AB and DC are also going to be equal and these two are going to be equal to vector A. And be very careful about your direction again. It has to be from D to C that equals vectors A to B. Now this is going to help us with expressing MD in terms of A and B. What does this mean? It means we have to start from M and using vector addition or subtraction, get to D. So I know that to get from M to D, I could go two ways. The way I'm going to go is probably slightly the longer way. I'm going to start at M, go to B, then go to point C, and then down to point D. In this way, I can write my path using vector addition. So MD really equals vector MB plus vector BC plus vector CD. Now let's sub in what we know. MB is half of vector AB. Vector AB is just little a. So I can write that MB equals half of vector little a. Vector BC, well, I've already labeled that in. That is just vector little b. Notice CD is the opposite direction of DC. DC is vector a, so it can be described as negative a. Now I have MB, BC and CD all in terms of A or B. So let's write it out. I'll have a half A plus BC was just little b and CD was minus A. I can collect like terms and simplify and then we'll get that MD is equal to B minus a half A. Notice you could have also gone from M to A to D and you should get the same thing. Part two, we need to find M, N. 
So again, we start at M and go whichever way you like along the vectors that we have drawn in to get to M. Again, I'm going to go in a similar direction. So I'm going to go from M to B and then B to C and then C to M. We know that MB is half of A in the same direction, half the length. BC, we know that's B. CN is just going to be half of CD. And we know that CD from our previous questions was in the opposite direction of A or minus A. So we get MN equals half A plus B minus half of A. And what you'll notice, we end up with vector B. And this is awesome because if you draw a direct line from M to N, notice this is going to be the same length and the same direction as BC and vector AD. And BC and AD are both vector B. So vector MN being parallel and the same length to these vectors should also be able to be written as vector little b. I'm going to flip this on its head and introduce you to vectors in 3D. So vectors can also be pictured in 3D space. And the exact same rules that apply to 2D vectors apply to vectors in 3D space. The only difference is these vectors will have three components. They'll have an X direction, they'll have a change in Y direction, and they'll also have a change in Z direction. But here's the catch. The plane for 3D space is not what you would expect. X is still our horizontal plane, which is nice. But Y is now the plane from front to back. Z is the plane that's going straight up and down. Then everything else seems pretty logical. Positive X is to the right, positive Y is in front, and positive Z would be up. But that's the little trick if you need to sketch these vectors. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sketch a vector OA, so from our origin like usual, to the point A. And this vector is given by 2 minus 1 minus 3. This means I go 2 across in the x direction, minus 1 in the y direction, and minus 3 down in the z direction from the origin. Now it's hard to see with my little diagram, but this is the vector that we end up with, OA. It's actually somewhere in that back quadrant, but just the way that I've drawn it kind of looks like it's in the front. The other vector is OC, so we start at O and we go to the point C. We move six units across in the X direction, negative three units back in the Y direction, and then two units up in the z direction. Again, my vector looks pretty terrible, um, but we can see a little bit that it's going upwards and diagonally. How do I compute OA plus OC if these vectors are in three dimensions? And the answer is simple. We do exactly the same as what we would have done in 2D. So you add each component, component-wise. So you do 2 plus 6 will give you 8. Minus 1 minus 3 will give you minus 4. And minus 3 plus 2 will give you minus 5. So you add the usual way. You also multiply by a scalar in the usual way. So if we had 2 times vector OA, we would just have 2 times vector 2 minus 1 minus 3. Multiply each component by 2, bring it inside, and then simplify. So 2 times vector OA is really equal to 4 minus 2 and minus 6. And again, this will be a vector in the same direction as OA, but just double the length like usual. Okay, let's apply it to some fun geometry. Well, fun in my opinion. Here's the situation. 
OABC is a trapezium. So it's a, a trapezium in three-dimensional space, okay, with OC equal to 2 times AB. We know also that OA is equal to 2 minus 1 minus 3, and OC is equal to 6 minus 3, 2. Now, I'm just going to draw this without the plane because it's a lot easier to visualize. So you can feel free to draw it in two dimensions like so. Let's also know that OC is 2 times AB. In direction is OC, just half the length. So that's how I draw the rest of this trapezium. Once I've done that, I just join B to C. Indicated that OC is parallel to AB on my plane. And I've also put different arrows in to indicate the direction of each of these vectors. OA, A to B, B to C and O to C. First, we need to find A, B. So what is that vector? The first thing I'm just going to write out is that I know O, C equals 2 times A, B. If I rearrange that, I know that half of O, C equals A, B. That's the easiest way for me to find AB using what we know. So AB is equal to half of OC, and I know that OC was 6 minus 3, 2. Bring the half on the inside and multiply. We'll get 6 times a half is 3, minus 3 times a half is minus 3 over 2, and 2 times a half is 1. And that is my vector AB. I'm also going to just draw on my other vectors too. I should have done this at the start. The only vector I don't know is BC. So to find the point B, remember if we have a vector starting from the origin and going to a point, say OB, that will also give me the coordinate point that B is at. I'm going to go O to A and then A to B because I know what vector OA is and I can simply add on vector AB. That will give me the coordinate point of B. OA was 2 minus 1 minus 3 plus AB. That was 3 minus 3 on 2, 1. If I add these together, I should get 5 minus 5 on 2, and then also minus 2. So that is not only my vector starting from the origin and going directly to the point B, but is also the coordinate of B, just like we saw in 2D that this happens. Next, we have to find vector BC in terms of OC, OA, and AB. So remember, we start at B. We use the vectors that we know. We could add them, subtract them to get to C. So find your path. I'm going to go BA plus vector AO plus vector OC. Notice that vector BA is negative AB. Vector AO is negative vector OA, and I know that. And vector OC, well, I can keep that as it is. So therefore, we can now sub in the values of A, B, O, A, and O, C, O, C to get our vector B, C. Again, add component-wise, but remember to take the negatives and times them into the vectors where appropriate.
So vector BC, I now know that that is 1 minus a half and 6. Where it goes 1 right minus a half back and then 6 units up to get from B to C. What does this look like in 3D space? Okay, because we sketched it in 2D, I'm not sure what it looks like in 3D. But there is software that will help you do this. So for instance, this is the software, GeoGebra, that you can use to graph vectors in. Excuse the, the little shapes on the right hand side, but this is our vector and it kind of looks like what we do. We have O to A, A to B, B to C, and we can see that O to C does look indeed parallel and like it's double the length of AB. Okay, so finish off 20A, part one and two. Work on your resource book. Just know that there isn't any 3D vectors in this exercise, but it does come later. And the same things apply in 3D. So I thought I would just introduce it to you now.